Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to week three of this 40 Days to Personal Transformation. And I'm Chrissy Key Rollins. It's such an honor to have been with you beauties so far on this journey. And I loved seeing everyone last night in person. Hey, Elaine, welcome. Hopefully we'll have some friends join, and if not, that's okay too. But if you are here, feel free to chat in. If you have any questions or anything that comes to your mind as I'm here doing this live uh, that I can support you around, feel free to chat in. And if you've had any breakthroughs or any other ahas or anything you took away from last night's in-person gathering or from looking at the material for week three on equanimity, then be sure to share those as well because what is personal is universal. So if you're going through it, we're all going through it or have been through it or going to go through it. So uh, we can all learn from one another, which is so, so cool about this. And that's something that really came through at the gathering last night, the feeling of supportedness. We are so powerful. And each one of you that committed to this journey is being held by every other person who has committed on this journey. So when you feel overwhelmed, when you feel like you're slipping behind, when you feel like you haven't caught up with the homework, when you feel like you're going off track, remember, we're all holding that space. And I'm getting chills as I say that because we're so connected. So that strength that you feel, that extra peace, that extra grounding, you're saying yes and staying committed is what creates that. You thought it was going through all the actions, getting them all correct, showing up every day, but no, it's staying committed. The true master knows it's not about staying the course all the time. It's about every time you find yourself stepping off the course, remembering to get back on course. And when you can move past doing this in order to get something in your life and into a place of doing it for your own satisfaction, for your own peace of mind, for your own stability, for your own balance, you will find such sweet liberation there. And you will find yourself being fully aligned with your desire to give to other people, which is part of the reason why you keep yourself down on the bottom of your priority list. When we can retrain and reprogram and get enough tangible, actual proof in our life that our self-care and our self-love will actually lift up others around us, help to serve more, then it's a lot easier to remember we are sacred and we must honor ourselves first because we are so important and we are on a big mission and others are counting on us. And the best way to give them more of us is making sure that we have all of ourselves to give. And this week's focus of equanimity, I love because it is such a powerful game changer in my own life. It's something that I support my clients through. It's something that I teach in the manifestation process uh, when I'm working with conscious manifestations and uh, working with individuals who want to consciously manifest more of their desires in their life. Equanimity is key to it. It's key to peace of mind. It's key to reducing anxiety. It's the key to mental and physical well-being. The idea of going with what is to meet life as it meets you, it's a power move. So often we think life is uh, just throwing stuff at us and we're so quick reacting, 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 reacting that we get so caught up, we fail to recognize that in truth, life is responding to us. Life is responding to us. But if we're so busy reacting, 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 we're going to have a lot harder time seeing our own patterns. We're going to have a lot harder time recognizing our stories, right? Those tapes that are playing. I heard some of that discussion happening last night. And we're going to have a lot harder time break, identifying and breaking out of our habits which is what is supporting life as you know it. So in order to support the life that you want, you have to create new habits and habits are created in the now, which is why week one was all about being present. When you return to the now, when you allow that clash of life to not be your cue to, to have a knee jerk reaction and make a plan and go for it, but instead to utilize the power of the pause, to give yourself space, breath, time. So many of us want and need more time without realizing that we hold 
we hold the power when it comes to our time. If you want more time, I saw Victoria post it in the, in the group this week, or I saw it posted in the group this week. If you want more time, you have to schedule it. You have to make more time. Life's not going to make time for you. Life's just doing its thing. We make the timeline. And if you want more space, if you want more time, then you have to take that time. You have to make that time. You have to claim it as yours or life will claim it for you. And it does and it will. And you can see that, right? So equanimity, that ability to stay, stay with what is, to feel what you're feeling and not react, but instead feel it, receive the information, connect to what you know to be true and take a step in faith that's where the magic happens. That's where things start to shift. That's where it starts to change. And this is a powerful thing to remember when it comes to changing your life. So often we think, I got to change my life, so let me change everything. You change one thing. You change one thing consistently, your life will forever change. You cannot get the same results if you change one thing. It's so powerful. Don't let the big picture overwhelm you. Come back to right now. In this present moment, stay and breathe with what is. When I'm in the present moment, when I come back to right now, when I utilize the power of the pause, so powerful. I can return back to what I believe to be true. I can return back to my core values. I can return back to my commitments to myself, to others. And from this place, I get to utilize my superpower as a human. Now, so often we think our power lies in controlling outcomes. Our power doesn't lie in controlling outcomes. If you haven't noticed, you don't get the power in that. You don't have the power in that. You don't get the say in how everything turns out. If you hadn't noticed, start to pay attention to that. It doesn't work that way. The power doesn't lie. Your power doesn't lie in controlling outcomes. Your power lies, our human power lies in, our ability to determine, to decide, to define, to choose for ourselves what those outcomes mean. So as you take that pause, as you sit in that reflective space, as you breathe into the present moment, when you are feeling the feelings, the emotions, the doubts, the worries, the fears, the frustrations, the anxiety, the overwhelm, when you're feeling the craving, the nagging, the tiredness, the whatever it is that you're feeling within yourself, Feel it. Be there present with it. And then make a choice to step out on faith based on a new definition of the world around you and you're part of it. So part of what was talked about this week in, in the reading, in the homework, was around cravings and how cravings are a really great key to up your awareness around where your food habits lie. Hey, Carly. Welcome, sweetie. Welcome live. If you have anything that you want to say, feel free to chat it in. I don't know why my camera's a little bit blurry, but it is. Hopefully, it won't matter in the big, in the big run. But we talked a lot about cravings in the text this week and how cravings can really clue you in on what your food habits are. Cravings are a, a crazy thing. And in my help with helping people make food choices and changing how they eat and lifestyle choices, cravings are one of the top reasons why we fall off of our commitments that we make around eating. Cravings are one of the top things that throw us off our game. I did great, except for that craving. I couldn't get over the craving. I myself just felt called to cut coffee out. And actually, I had gotten that calling for quite a while, but I didn't want to because I didn't want to go through any kind of caffeine withdrawals. I didn't want to go through any cravings for it. But my body insisted one day. She said, no more. And I said, okay. And I transitioned with no problem. I was listening. I was ready for it. I allowed it. I welcomed it. I didn't resist it. It wasn't a problem. It was an agreement. So when we think about cravings, we have the ability to define those to mean whatever we want. It means you're going without something. We, we, we had it mentioned last night in the gathering that every time that we say no to something, we're saying yes to something else. When that craving comes forward, why not drop what you know, shift your perspective, and re-identify that craving not as a reminder of what you're not having, but as a reminder of what you're freeing yourself from, what you're liberating yourself from. 
I'm big into nutritional cleansing and supporting the body into being flooded with high quality whole food nutrients so the body can kick in its own natural cleansing mechanism. I'm a, I'm a big fan of that. I'm a big fan of the, the fruit feast that's on deck. And I was going to talk about that today, but maybe I will. Maybe I'll hop back on and do another live later this week. We'll see what happens. I didn't want to be on here for very long. Um, what was I saying? Uh, we have the what was I saying? equanimity cravings, fruit feast. It's okay. It'll come back. It's a beautiful thing that the universe does. You just got to let it go and it'll come back to you. As these cravings come forward, I was talking about nutritional cleansing. So one of the things that happens whenever we start to flood our body with high quality nutrients is that it often tastes like crap to a lot of us. It doesn't taste good. It tastes real grassy, real earthy, it tastes like dirt. It doesn't taste good. Now, one of the reasons why it doesn't taste good is because you're flushing out receptacles that are housing garbage and that garbage is floating to the surface and what you're tasting is the crap that you're kicking out of your body. So if you stay with eating clean for two days, three days, four days, five days, six days a week, two weeks, your body will readjust itself and you'll notice that food will taste different. It'll taste more vibrant. It'll taste more fresh. It'll be multidimensional. It'll taste like life because you will start to clear out those old receptacles. You'll start to actually put in the nutrients that those receptacles were designed to hold instead of these false uh, replicas that, that give a false sense of satisfaction and just clog up all these, all these little receptacles and receivers that we have throughout our body. So as you start to put in that good, all that garbage that you have stored. Hey, Catherine, good to see you on here, babe. All that garbage that you stored flows to the surface. So I'm here to say, what if those cravings are nothing more than a sign as to what you're freeing yourself from? So when you're craving that beer, when you're craving that caffeine or that coffee or that chocolate, that sweet thing or that salty thing, when you don't give it to yourself and you start to get that craving, it's a clear sign that that's getting kicked out of your system. You're doing a beautiful thing. You're doing everything right. It's a confirmation. It's a validation. It's an affirmation to keep going. And once you move past that point, you will find yourself free of it. I've been vegetarian for, gosh, it's 2019, so over a decade. Yeah, about a decade now, nine years. And there are times that I still will have a craving for like a hot dog. And I laugh because I'm like, what if that's like leftover hot dog residue from, you know, a decade ago when I ate a hot dog that's just now clearing itself from my cellular memory? I don't know, guys. I can't prove any of this stuff. But I'm saying you can't prove any of it anyway. So why not go with the narrative that makes you feel empowered, that makes you feel fulfilled, and that best lines up with your beliefs that this is a divine experience that's happening, that you are supported, that everything in this universe is championing in your favor for your success, for your full vibrancy and vitality in this life. You can live by whatever definition you want to, but that's your power of choice. You have that ability to make that choice. So this is my invitation to you this week as you prep for the fruit feast that's on deck for next week, as you uh, really sit with this idea of equanimity, as you loosen your grips on control over things that you have no control over, and you sink into the present moment to become aware of where your power lies, and you begin to consciously utilize that power of choice and start to redefine your world. I invite you to reflect on just taking that pause. When I take the pause, I can then act in my faith. Take time to reflect on that as you sit with that food, as you sit with that craving, as you sit with that itch, whatever that itch is to reach for that thing that you said, I'm going to cut back on, to reach for that thing you said, I'm going to leave alone this week, right? And then ask yourself, what thought or feeling, what do I want this taste to replace? I didn't consider myself an emotional eater, but then on the other side, I realized I did eat to escape what I was feeling in the moment. I would feel overwhelmed. This tastes good. While I'm tasting the goodness of this, I am not looking at or involved with the not so feel goodness of this is happening over here, right? What do I want this taste to replace? And sit with that. 
and another thing in, in preparation for the fruit feast that's really, really important if you're not a natural vegetarian like myself is so often we think, oh, this is what I can't do, or this is so hard for me to do, or I can't do this. Instead of focusing on, I can't do that. I can't go three days, four days with just fruit. I can't do that. I can't do that. I can't live without coffee. I can't live without wine. I can't live without red meat. I can't live without my donuts, my bagel, my cream cheese, my Nutella, whatever the thing is for you. I've honestly never even eaten that, but I hear it's wildly addictive. Whatever that thing is you think you cannot do, instead of putting your attention there, focus instead, what can I do? There's no way I can eat 15 different fruits every day, but I can eat apples and oranges and pears and pineapples, right? What can you do? Allow what can I do to replace what do I have to do? And start looking for what you can do. That's what changed everything in my life. I stopped saying, what can I do for this period of time? And instead, what can I do consistently moving forward? What can I do consistently moving forward? What can I do consistently moving forward? Right? Maybe you got to psych yourself up for this three day or the, for the fruit face focus, or maybe you want to create those, those long term lasting changes. And then the action, the action that was really on my heart and mind, because this really, 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 really goes hand in hand with equanimity so, so, so well. No matter what, no matter if you stay the course, no matter if you get off track, no matter if you give into cravings, no matter if you sit with cravings, no matter if you make that empowered choice or if you fall back into default habits, no matter what happens, no matter what happens, no matter what happens, remember, you always deserve more love, not less. Always. So be sure to be loving, kind, gentle, compassionate with yourself as you go through this. I think that's the real challenge here. I think that's the real journey. I think that's a real habit to create. All of this helps you to bring your attention to that, to wake up out of those cycles and uh, allow you to integrate this as lasting change. Now, if there is chat going on here, I can't see any of it. So I'm just gonna open a second browser just in case. Just wanna make sure that nobody's waiting for any kind of response on anything. And if you are here, if you have any thoughts, go ahead and chat them in. I think that's everything that I had on my heart and mind. Oh, about the, the fruit feast. This is something that I feel is important. I will do like a mini little live in case people want to just catch that. Um, but for the fruit feast, it's important to remember the body's going to be fine. Your body's going to be fine. It's going to be fine. The body was designed to go for days without any food at all. So having a few days of just nutrient dense, easy to digest, flavorful focus, the body will be fine. So if you're worried, I'm not going to have enough energy. You're worried. I'm not going to be able to make it through the day. You're worried about your body. Your body will be fine. You're going to learn something new about yourself. That's all this is. It's an invitation, an invitation for self-discovery to learn something new. In order to learn it about yourself, you have to do something different, right? If you keep doing the same thing, nothing different. Just look and see if there's any comments. Thanks for hanging with me. Okay, not seeing any comments, so it's not just on my end. Just making sure you never know. Sometimes these things get caught up. Okay, let me see if there's anything else that I was going to say. Boop, boop. No, I'll save it for another little live. I'll do like a midweek live. So let me know. Um, how does all this feel to you? Let me know if there's anything you're going to take away and, and integrate. Let me know if you had any breakthroughs in your thoughts. And if uh, there's any thoughts or thinking that you have dropped and new perspectives that you've been able to take on or anything that you're going to experiment with. So um, I love you. You're beautiful and amazing. And I honor you for being here and your commitment to yourself into this 40 days. And uh, yeah, I'll see you around. Reach out if I can be of any support. Bye.